Hello and welcome to Misheard Song Lyrics Podcast. We're doing season three, episode 112. My name is Misheard. We're going to do a first ever The Killers Misheard Song Lyric on their song, Mr. Brightside. So the Misheard Song Lyric is, Open up my eagle eyes. The correct lyrics is, Open up my eager eyes. Very close. All right, so decided to do this killer's or the killer's misheard song lyric for this episode because went out one night for karaoke, shocker, and met a new karaoke friend named Scott, and he was singing this, and I thought, ah, I always thought for years it was eagle eyes, not eager. So let's do it. So Mr. Brightside is the first single released by American rock band The Killers. They are actually formed back in 2001 in Las Vegas, so Sin City, by a Brandon Flowers who does lead vocals, keyboards, and bass, and a Dave Cuning lead guitar and backing vocals. So the story goes back in 2001, Brandon Flowers was fired by his first band, a Utah synth pop trio named Blush Response. I bet you they didn't wish they fired him now. Anyway, after attending an Oasis concert at the Hard Rock Hotel, so put a pin on that, during the tour of Brotherly Love, Flowers realized his calling was to be in a rock band and began searching for like-minded musicians who would appreciate his, you know, take on music. So this was pre-social media, so he came across an ad, yes, an ad in the newspaper, the Las Vegas newspaper to be exact, and found Dave Cuny, a 25-year-old guitarist who had moved to Vegas from Iowa a year later. When they met, they bonded instantly and they had the same similar music influences and started to pretty much write songs together in Cuny's apartment. And the first did you know is how they got the name The Killers. They actually named their band The Killers as that was the name of a fictional band in the music video for a new order called Crystal. So if you look it up, I guess that's the fake band in that video. So that's what they named it after. And then in November 2001, they had headed to kill the Messenger Studio in Henderson, Nevada, along with a recently required drummer, Matt Norcross, to begin recording a demo. They recorded two tracks, one of them being Mr. Brightside, which was the first song Flowers and Cuning wrote together, and then the second song, Desperate. Well, like any other bands trying to struggle out there, they continued playing at small venues across their hometown and often playing Sunday nights at a transgender bar named Sasha, and apparently it's not named Tramp. So you gotta love our, our gay and transgender bars. They're always good at helping new artists. And it wasn't long before they caught the attention of a Braden Merrick, an A&R rep for Warner Brothers Records, who came across their demo on a website dedicated to unsigned bands in the Las Vegas era. And then after attending some of their live show, he offered to help the band find a record deal and eventually became their manager. The story goes he took the band to San Francisco area to Berkeley to record demos with former Green Day manager Jeff Saltzman and then they sent the demo tapes around to major record labels in the U.S. They even were invited to perform at a number of showcases but were not ultimately signed. Interesting. The band however did catch the eye of an Alex Gilbert who was an A&R rep from the U.K. So Gilbert took the demo with him back to the U.K. and showed it to his friend Ben Durling who worked at a newly formed independent label called in, uh, Lizard King Records in London and must have been impressed by the demo because not even meeting the band in person, Lizard King offered the band a deal based on the strength of the five song demos they made and they signed them on that British label back in July of 2003. And apparently per Flowers in their first performance together as the Killers, they played Mr. Brightside as part of a two song open mic net uh, set at Las Vegas's Cafe Roma. Of the performance, Flower said, quote unquote, it was terrible, awful. You gotta love that. You know, you always gotta make yourself, instead of just totally, you know, like giving up, he's like, we gotta just get, get better. So then they handed out a demo song for free during their songs in 2002. And after signing with that UK uh, indie label, Lizard King Records, the track was sent to a radio as a buzz single and received frequent spins by a BBC radio. So in Britain, one DJ named Zane Lowe and Steve Lamack, as well as being played listed by XFM. And then just one week after its April release, MTV2 secured a deal to air the song for a week. So that was very helpful to get that. During this, the Killers performed the song live on a rooftop of, Caesar Pal of Caesar's Palace during halftime of the Las Vegas Raiders' first ever home game at Allegiant Stadium on September 21st. 
actually in 2020, so not just pretty recently, the halftime show is broadcast on U.S. television on ESPN and ABC's simulcast coverage of Monday Night Football. So, okay, so they have a record deal with this indie, lab, uh, indie label in Britain, essentially the U.K. How did Mr. Brightside do? Well, uh, when Brightside was released as a band's debut single and it was featured on their debut studio album Hot Fuss back in 2004, it it did pretty good. The song was released on September 29, 2003. It became more popular upon its re-release in 2004, peaking at number 10 in both the United States and the UK. That's good. It is the killer's best-selling song in the US where it sold over 3.5 million copies. And in the UK, it was also it also sold about 3.5 uh, million and is the longest charting single on the UK chart top 100 with 278 weeks that's over five years on that chart and it's the most streamed track released prior to 2010 that's pretty amazing especially since when they try to sell their demo tapes around none of the major labels in the u.s were interested so i'm glad they just kept going and then mr brightside entered the billboard hot 100 at number 40 on february 12 2005 and peaked at number 10 on june 10th thus making it what we will call a sleeper hit no one expected it that's kind of when I started to hear like who they are, like the killers. Oh, it's an interesting song, interesting lyrics, right? And then two weeks after its peak at number 10 on the Billboard charts, the killers released the debut album Hot Fuzz, okay, uh, which where the song released, uh, reached 3.5 million in sales in 2016. And in 2005, I guess Mr. Brightside was the sixth most downloadable song on iTunes. To this day, Mr. Brightside has still the highest popularity rating that iTunes offers even after being available to purchase for over 10 years. That's a big feat. And additionally, sales of Hot Fuss, the album, reached over 5 million sales by 2006. Uh, the online music streaming service Last.fm reported in 2010 that Mr. Brightside was the most downloaded song on the website. And by July 2014, the song sold more than 820,000 copies in the UK, making it UK's number 12 most downloaded rock track of all time. So the UK folks just love them there. Okay, then Mr. Brightside was named Song of the Decade by a UK radio station called Absolute Radio and XFM, so satellite radio. And in April 2010, Last FM revealed that it was the most listened to track since the launch of the online music service with the track being played over 7.66 million times, amazing. And here we go, more accolades. In October of 2010, it was voted ninth in the greatest guitar riffs of the 21st century so far by Total Guitar Magazine. It's all you guitar, you know, geeks here geeking out for me to know. And initially in 2010, Rolling Stones listed Mr. Brightside as the 48th best song of the 21st century. So it just keeps going. And then just recently, as of April 2021, Mr. Brightside has spent 260 non-consecutive weeks or five years on the UK singles chart, the most out of any song. And as of 2017, it had charted on the UK chart in 11 of the last 13 years. That's a, that's a long standing popular song, including a 35 week run peaked at number 49 in 2016, 2017. It was the UK's most streamed pre 2010 song for purchase um, until uh, it was, sorry, it was the UK's most streamed pre 2010 song until it was ironically surpassed by Oasis's Wonderwall in late 2018 and continued to be purchased for downloaded hundreds of times a week by 2017. Remember I said to put a pin on it that that's how it all started when Brandon Flowers was at an Oasis concert and realized I need to be in a rock band. So ironically Oasis knocked him off on the charts then. I don't think they mind. And then in March of 2018 the song reached the milestone of staying in the top 100 of the UK singles charts for 200 weeks. Again so they're like, how did that happen? Some explanations out there have included the song's popularity at parties. Yes, it's very popular. It's popularity on streaming services and the continued presence of the Killers as a popular live band in the UK. According to the official charts company, the song has streamed 281 million times in the UK and has sold 3.5 million copies there as of April 2021. And I actually went to their concert hmm, five, six years ago when it was here in Portland, Oregon in the Northwest, in the United States, and they are a very good performing live band. So I will attest to that. So what's the song about? Because there's a lot of crazy, 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 crazy lyrics. And of course, the one I thought the misheard was open up my eagle eyes, not eager eyes. 
Apparently, Mr. Brightside depicts a true story of Brandon Flowers, the lead singer's jealousy and paranoia when he walked into a bar in Las Vegas and found his girlfriend cheating on him. Yeesh. Uh, per Brandon, quote unquote, I was asleep and I knew something went wrong. Or I, I was asleep and I knew something was wrong, he said. I have these instincts. I went to the Crown and Anchor, a bar in Vegas, and my girlfriend was there with another guy. There you go. I wonder where she is now. Probably hitting herself. Well, why did I do that? The video itself is also interesting. If you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube, obviously. When you first look at the first thing I think of is, wow, it looks just like a Moulin Rouge, you know, from the movie that came out pretty close to that time. Uh, it shows them in all the French costumes. And I guess apparently there were two videos made. One was the first one that was shot in black and white and features the band in an empty room. So no costumes, nothing special. The second one is the one we know of that's showing on the internet. And it was based, here it is, on the 2001 Moulin Rouge movie that came out and was filmed for the song's re-release. And so the first version, also known as the UK version, like I said, was in an empty room. I actually was filmed in Staten Island, New York, ironically, and it was directed by Brad and Brian Palmer under the studio Surround. Later in the year, the label decided we really need to do a new video that's gonna create a more mainstream video for the US market, which was smart on their part. And then the second video I'll call the Moulin Rouge theme video was also known as the US version. And that was actually filmed in LA, California. That version was directed by Sophie Mueller, and the video stars Isabella Miko, I was wondering who that, the lady was in there, Eric Roberts, yeah, Julia Roberts' older brother, in a love triangle occurring within the context of a burlesque show, hence the Moulin Rouge feel. So I was like, I want to look into who this Isabella Miko is, because she looks very familiar. So her full name is Isabella Anna, oh boy, Mikolczyk. She was born on January 21st, 1981. She's a Polish-American actress, dancer, film producer, and environmental activist. And she's best known for starring in the film Coyote Ugly that came out, remember that movie, and the music video Mr. Brightside and Miss Atomic Bomb by The Killer. So they had her two of their videos. The weird thing is if you see the video is the whole Eric Roberts storyline. He plays creepy guy like he does, kind of like possessive, possessive creepy guy like he was in another video with Mariah Carey. Hmm. And there, you know, from what I can figure, it seems like he's Isabel Miko's pimp. To, you know, and she's a very pale courtesan, and he throws her an apple every time he wants her to flirt with another man. So I'm assuming the context is I'm going to throw this apple to you, and this is where you need to go to entertain that man of the night. And the killer's lead singer, Brandon Flowers, is obviously smitten with her, and he even sings the line, It was only a kiss, it was only a kiss. So I'm assuming he's talking about maybe when he caught his ex-girlfriend, that's what he saw and that's what she said and it didn't mean anything. Interesting. And there's one scene where he goes head to head with creepy Eric Roberts with a game of checkers, not chess, but checkers, and where he knows that Eric Roberts is gonna win the checkers. Maybe the checkers is maybe symbolic of his love interest to the courtesan, and he flips the game board over in slow motion, you know, crazy. So how did it do? Well, the US version did quite well. Um, MTV VMA in 2005, it won Best Artist in a Video, beating other nominees at that time. Get this, John Legend, Sierra, The Game, and My Chemical Romance. That's who they beat out with this video. The song was also nominated for a Grammy in 2006, but did not win. Um, it was nominated for Best Pop Performance by a duo or group with vocal, but lost to a live version of this Love by Maroon 5. That's a good song too, but hey, they won MTV Music. And then the photos featured on the inner sleeve of the album, Hot Fuss, were shot on set during the filming of the UK version, so the one where they're empty in black and white, and was inspired with that black and white look of that video. So that's what they use actually for the insert there, inner sleeve. Uh, last thing to know also is the uses of Mr. Brightside, because I mean, you've probably heard it on some ad or something, and it has been used, actually it was on the soundtrack of a movie called The Holiday, a 2006 film that starred a character by the name of Amanda Woods, played by Cameron Diaz. Uh, and in this movie, in order to relieve some stress, I forgot about her boyfriend's infidelity, so she was cheated on, she goes on a holiday. The song also has a very big relevance to two different, two different fans. Okay, so the first, which I didn't know, it's a crowd favorite among the Michigan Wolverines football fans in Michigan Stadium where fans 
in excess of over 100,000 will sing along to this song when it's played in the fourth quarter. Interesting. And then in the 2017 football season, the song also was sung in unison by the student superfans at alumni station or stadium during a Boston College Eagles football game and has become the unofficial go-to song for the Boston College fans during sporting events. I wonder if it's because they thought it was Eagle Eyes too. That makes sense. Boston College Eagles football thinking it was open up my eagle eyes. All right. And then two other did you knows I wanted to share with you guys. British singer James Blunt. You're beautiful, that guy. What happened to him? Anyway, he says that Mr. Brightside is his favorite song of all time. You're going to love that, The Killers. And last but not least, in 2008, it was released as a downloadable content for the Rock Band series. It is one of the all-time highest-selling songs for the game, and the song has never been used. Oh, actually, I'm wrong. It says the song has never been used in a TV show or advertisement. So it's been in Rock Band, the series. It's been sung over and over in fourth quarter at a Michigan Wolverine football game, as well as the Boston College Eagles football game. So there you go, Mr. Brightside. And I'm opening up my evil eyes or eager eyes. Hopefully you learned something. If you have some great ideas just like this misheard song, like this gem, let us know. We would love to have you on the show. We can talk about it or I can just give you a shout out like I've done with others. You can also send us an email, misheard song lyrics. That's at M-I-S-S-H-E-A-R-D songs at gmail.com or send us a note on any of our social media sites. We're everywhere. So please keep singing those songs. Bye.